In this scene, we'll be looking at the simulation scale and speed parameters in Exposure Effects. We'll change the simulation scale value to emulate various simulation sizes whilst keeping the bounds and voxel sizes the same. We'll then tweak the sim speed parameter to get slower or faster simulations. Finally, we'll ramp down the speed of a shockwave explosion by animating the sim speed value. Alright, so we're going to start by looking at the simulation scale parameter. But first, let's just quickly get acquainted with our scene. We have an explosion effects object. We have a, a polygon object called sphere. It's actually an editable sphere that's been squashed and stretched. Then we have this vibrate tag, this vibrate expression tag. And that's simply adding a lot of uh, random motion, random rotation, I should say, on the mostly on the heading, but also a bit on the pitch and bank. So that's just going to make it tumble a bit. And then, of course, we have an Exposure Effects source tag. That has a velocity set to 100% and a pressure of 40, which is uh, different from default. But the result is when I play, we're adding fluid. It's being advected based on all of the calculations within our Exposure Effects solver. So we need to have a look at our simulation scale parameter, and we can find that on our simulation tab. And it's the first parameter. So you can see here it's sim scale and it's a percentage slider. And the best way to see how this affects um, compared to default is actually to put it side by side with another system. And I'm just going to duplicate the exact same system. And I'm going to move the whole thing over. So they're side by side. And I'm going to change their names. So let's call this one the default because that's a default exposure effects container. And then this one is going to be our 10% sim scale. And we can change the color. And if we look at the Explosion Effects object itself, we can actually see in the Sources tab that we have this same system checked, which actually means that we will only look at sources that are within the same hierarchy. So this one over here won't affect this one here and vice versa. Now, if I play this simulation, we'll get a very similar, similar looking sim in each of these. It won't be exactly identical because, of course, we've moved it in in space. And, but we're seeing that the fluid reaching the top of the container at the same time, the general vorticity is exactly the same speed and pace. And it's respecting all of the same settings that we have in our exposure effects container, of course, because they are matching, they're identical. So go back to frame zero, go into our exposure effects object in the 10% sim scale one, go to the simulation tab, and let's drop that to 10%. And let's hit play again and see what happens. And we'll see a dramatic difference. So you'll see immediately the velocity from the sphere is throwing the fluid much further in the container in within our, our exposure effects volume. And it's actually reaching the top of the container much quicker. So we're on frame 40. This one has barely got to halfway. This one has been there for a good 20 frames already. So what exactly is going on here? Well, there's another way of demonstrating this, and that's by duplicating another container. I'm going to turn off our 10% sim scale for a second, and I'm going to duplicate our default container again. And I'm going to hide the original one and turn it all off. Now this one I'm going to call just 10% scale, because I'm actually going to scale this down as we would any object in Cinema 4D. So I'm just going to use the scale tool. I'm going to hold shift to quantize this. Oops, and then I'm going to drop it down to 10% of its original scale. So it's literally been shrunk down within our viewport here. So let's just uh, change the color of that one as well. So we can see that it's a different one. And then if we go into our exposure effects object, we'll see that some parameters have actually been scaled with that scale down. And we'll actually want to change that because what our scale sim scale is doing is it's not actually scaling these parameters down. Uh, let's turn our sim scale back on and now we've got these side by side we can actually see them in comparison now this one here of course it's not it's actually behaving like more like the original larger sim was but just scaled down so what we'll need to do is we'll need to put our gravity back our turbulence radius back and then also if you'll notice our velocity in this one fires it to almost the size of the container but in this tiny one over here it doesn't reach the size yet. So we'll just go and in the Explosion Effects source tag, I'm going to change the velocity from just having an, an effect of 100% to 1000% because it's actually multiplying it by that 
percent scale or dividing it by. So now we're actually seeing that this is actually matching the look of our sim scale. And you can see that they're going to reach the top of the container at pretty much the same time. But the difference is, of course, is we've actually had to manually um, scale this one down, whereas in the 10% simulation scale instead of real model scale, we go to this over here, we've only had to just change this slider down to 10%. So the difference is, is, is it almost like we're, we're zooming in on our simulation space. So we're actually um, scaling up our entire simulation space so that we're looking, it's almost like we're looking at a microscope and we're increasing the, we're decreasing where the exposure effects bounds are covering in real world space, but we're keeping the container itself exactly the same size. So essentially we've, we've shrunk down our simulation, but kept the visual size exactly the same. Okay, so let me just get rid of that one and turn on our default one again. Now, of course, if we increase our sim scale, so if we put it up to 200%, I'm just gonna denote that on the XP system, and then I'm gonna change it in our exposure effects object, sim scale at 200%. When I put, hit play now, it's essentially the opposite of what we did with the shrinking, the reduction of the sim scale, and we've now got a space that's twice as large, twice as voluminous as the, uh, the sim that we're seeing on the left-hand side. So, this is now gonna take longer to reach the top of that container, but it's essentially scaling all of our velocities and all of our effects so that it matches a larger space now. And we can use that sim scale parameter, of course, to create different scale simulations, all of those kind of things. Um, to add more detail, we'd want to be doing things like increasing the vorticity and stuff like that. But sim scale is a good one if we just need to quickly uh, decrease or increase the scale of our simulation. Okay, so let's go back to frame zero. And the next one we're going to look at is actually the simulation speed. So let's delete those systems and go back to our default system. Uh, let's reduplicate that and move it over here because we're doing another side by side comparison. And instead of a uh, sim scale, we're doing sim speed this time. So let's call it sim speed and go into our exposure effects object. And this time we're going to change the sim speed and it's going to be down to 50%. So let's take a look at what the resulting simulation is here. And as you can see, we're getting a, a much slower motion in our right hand exposure effects system here. And this one's just moving in real time or at, at its 100% speed. And then of course, this one's gonna take much, much longer to actually get to where it needs to go. Now, of course, what we've done here is essentially we've slowed down time. We've done, we've slowed everything down. We've slowed all of those velocities down and it's giving us the effect of this slow motion fluid. So of course that's a perfect use case is that we could do slow motion fluids and in fact we can set sim speed to zero and you'll see no longer is the that mesh adding any velocity any data and in fact if we have it zero at the very beginning we'll get a very boring looking simulation and of course, the opposite of that is if we increase, let's get a 500%, and you can see we get a, a simulation occurring. It's moving much, much, much faster, five times faster. Now, if we're doing this, if we're creating a simulation that's going this fast, we might need to actually use some more subframe steps. We might need to decrease the CFL to keep it more stable, and we might need to increase the accuracy here. So let's just try that. I'll increase the max sub steps as well. And you can see it's actually maintaining a bit more shape there. We're getting less artifacts, we're getting less stepping, and there we go. So that's an extreme speed in our simulation. And if you wanted to accelerate one and then decelerate it, we could of course keyframe things. Now, I'm gonna do that in our original container so we can just focus on that. But we'll open up our exposure effects object here, and we'll look at our sphere object. And in the sphere object, I'm actually gonna create a very large amount of pressure to create an explosion effect. So let's make the pressure go to 5,000. And you'll see all of a sudden now we're getting huge amounts of pressure and huge amounts of simulation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna give it more space to simulate. So I'm gonna increase the size, the actual size of our container here so it's got a bit more space to move into. And then let's play again. There we go. 
it's much more aggressive simulation. But what I want to do is I want to create a slowdown effect so that it starts off really fast and then we slow down perhaps at this very moment. So right now our sim scale is set to 100. I want to start slowing it down around about frame 14 and then by let's say frame 20, 21, let's drop it down to say 20%. And let's see what we get. Now, of course, we're viewing this playback uh, in the viewport and it's an uncached simulation. So it might not be immediately obvious that we're doing this slowdown, but you can see there, we're actually slowing the simulation down. Remember, we're not slowing down the animation of our sphere object. So of course, if you're gonna be want doing one of these effects, you'll want to be slowing down your your animated objects to match our fluid sim. But as you can see, our fluid sim is moving much slower, much more gradually. And I'm gonna actually cache this so we can actually see that explosion a bit more clearly. And let's just do that by going to the utilities tab. And I'm gonna add an XP cache object. I'm actually gonna turn compression off because we don't need to compress. It'll make the caching faster. And we're gonna hit build cache. I'll come back once that's cached and then we'll look at the slowdown that we're creating with our animated sim speed. Okay, so that's cached and because we're occupying quite a few voxels, we actually, uh, and I turned compression off, we're occupying almost nine gigs worth of uh, disk space for those 150 frames. It actually took a minute and 15 seconds to complete, so it's nice and fast. And we can now see a bit more in real time, that slowdown effect. So you can see we ramp it down and we get that really nice slowing effect of our simulation. So this is a favorite where we, we are doing explosions and really fast moving fluids, and then we can suddenly ramp them down to create this really beautiful stylized slowdown effect. So if we look from the top here as well, that'll be quite dramatic. There we go. And like I said, uh, if we'd want to slow down the animation of our torus to match that of our simulation, or for now we can just hide it. And you can see there, we get that moment of slowdown and then it just continues to develop nice and slowly, as we can see. And of course we could ramp it back up again, so let's try that. Let's do from the point, let's go from around about, in fact, let's slow it down even more. Let's slow it down to, first of all, 10% speed. Let it develop on a little bit more. It won't be quite as far on as this. And then let's go back here and let's ramp that back up to 100%. And let's recache that and we'll return to view the result there. So let's go to our cache object, build cache. I'm going to just overwrite that cache and we'll come back in a second. All right, and that's now cached. And if we take a look, that took a bit longer. It took two minutes 32. Now that will be for the reason that we returned the simulation back to its original speed. And there you go, you get that really nice slowdown. So you can see 10% makes this look really nice. Um, I'm actually going to hide our adaptive bounds and our bounds just so that we get a nice clean view of this. And you can see here, we slow it right back down and then we continue a little bit later on. And that continuing obviously makes it occupy far more voxels and hence our slightly longer sim time of, uh, of two minutes. And there we go. So that's a really fun way of playing with time and scale in your simulations. And it'll give you some really nice effects when you do some ramping down or animating of those parameters.